Good morning, friend. My name is Becky, if you're new, and welcome to my kitchen. It is cold and rainy and dreary out there, so today is the perfect day to spend some time in the kitchen filling my freezer with some savory breakfast items. My sister is due with her third baby in the next week or so, and so half of what I'm gonna be preparing today is going to her house, the other half is staying here. We are going to be making breakfast burritos, English muffin breakfast sandwiches, croissant breakfast sandwiches, and a breakfast casserole. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my oven preheated to 350. We are going to be making a lot of the items or components for these dishes in the oven, so I wanna get the oven preheated. Now, we are going to be following my very first scratch batch cooking guide. This guide I put together to kind of take all the thinking out of it. So it's gonna step us through step by step by step how to prepare all of this to get us in and out of the kitchen as quickly as possible. It has a shopping list. So yesterday I went to the grocery store and I got all the items we need for today's prep. And then the first thing on the guide to-do list is to preheat the oven and get our veggies prepped. So I have three bell peppers here and three onions. I also thawed out some bacon from a local farmer. I've got eggs from my own chickens and we are gonna be cooking up some sausage here in just a bit. But the guide tells me the first thing I need to do is prep my veggies. So if you're interested in a guide like this that's gonna walk you through step by step on how to fill your freezer with homemade meals, then the link will be down in the description box. We're prepping these onions for a couple of the different recipes we are making today. And so one thing about the guide is the goal is to try to get in and out of the kitchen as quick as possible. And so we are gonna prep the onions and the peppers for the two different recipes that call for onions and peppers all at one time so that we're trying to be as efficient as possible. So the written guide is just basically a written form of kind of the way my brain works when I'm in the kitchen and I'm trying to be efficient when I'm doing these big cooking days. I love cooking, but I also love being efficient. And so that is kind of the benefit of having a written guide. But I will walk you through step by step on how I'm going to be doing this so that you can see how my brain works. So the only thing I did yesterday to prepare for this is I did go to the grocery store. I got my meat out to thaw and I shredded some cheese because we are going to need two different kinds of cheese today. But if you didn't want to shred your own cheese, you could just get shredded cheese at the grocery store. This is the only veggie prep we need to do for this cooking day. So I'm going to just leave these vegetables on this cutting board until we are going to be cooking them up. So I'm just gonna set this aside. The buzzer just went off that my oven is preheated, so that's perfect timing. We just finished prepping our vegetables, so now we can get our bacon cooking in the oven. And I'm not only gonna use this cookie sheet to cook the bacon, but I'm also gonna use it to do some of the veggie prep we need. So I really like doing batch cooking. The reason is because I can get in the kitchen and I can messy up the same dish a couple different times for a couple different things. And so it just makes it so that I have less dishes overall in the end to wash. So I am gonna need two cookie sheets to cook all of this bacon at one time. I do have them lined with some parchment paper just to make cleanup a little bit easier at the end. This is gonna bake anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. This bacon is pretty thick, so it might be a little bit of a longer bake time. Just cook it until it's the doneness you like. 
We prefer crispy bacon, so we might even go to the 25 minute time, just depending on how fast it cooks up. So I'm just referencing my guide here, and the next thing we are supposed to be doing after we get that into the oven is actually cook the sausage. So let me grab my, my large roasting pan because we are going to use this roaster pan for the sausage and eggs and onions and peppers. You don't have to have a large roaster pan like this. If you have a large skillet, you could use that as well. Or if you have small, a smaller pan, you can use that. It'll just take a few more steps to get everything cooked. Here I've got my breakfast sausage and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into even sections here so that I can make up the sausage patties. You could absolutely use preformed sausage patties if you wanted for this, but we are gonna be putting these on croissants and croissants are kind of oblong shape. So the reason I like to go ahead and just form the patty myself is so that I can shape it the shape of the croissant so that you get a little bite of sausage in each bite instead of just a round sausage patty in the center of your breakfast sandwich. These are gonna shrink a lot, so I'm flattening them out way more than I think I need to. While that's cooking, I'm just gonna rotate the bacon. No, looking beautiful. Definitely needs to be rotated though. Our sausages is now done, so I'm gonna get these off here. I did put a paper towel down on this plate just to sop up any excess grease. And then we're gonna use this pan and some of the bacon or sausage drippings to fry up our eggs for our croissant sandwiches, but I don't need all of that. And I need to cook 12 eggs. I turned this down a little bit. I'm gonna turn it back up a little bit. You all know I cook with salt, but for some reason I don't like salt on my eggs. So all I'm gonna put on these eggs is a little bit of pepper. But of course, if you like salt on your eggs, go ahead and salt your eggs at this point. And you can cook your eggs however you like them for this. I like the eggs popped, the yolk popped, and I like them over medium. So now that they've cooked pretty well on one side, I'm gonna go ahead and flip them. I'm trying to keep them around the same shape as the croissant, and we're gonna use eggs for not only the croissant, but also for the English muffins. So we've got quite a few eggs that we need to cook here. So I'm just gonna flip these. I believe we have 24 eggs we're gonna be making this way. Let me check my list here. Working in batches, pan fry 24 eggs over medium. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna repeat this process three more times and that will give us all the eggs we need. I've seen some kind of cool little like round things you can use to keep the eggs in a specific shape, but I'm just frying them just like this in this pan. I've seen you can actually use a canning ring, which I've never tried that before. That would be kind of a fun experiment to try at some point. They're staying a little bit better in place since I've got this pan pretty hot again. Oh. 
I'm just checking on my bacon and I can see that two of these pieces are done. So I'm gonna get those off just so that those outer pieces don't overcook. Those bottom ones have a ways to go, but this piece is done. All right, we'll let those keep cooking. I had to supplement my eggs with some store-bought eggs and look at the difference. This is my chicken egg and this is the store-bought egg. Big, big difference. While those are cooking, we're gonna get going on scrambling some eggs for the breakfast burritos. And so in this bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and crack, I think it's 12 eggs. Yes, so one dozen eggs in this bowl because we're gonna be scrambling them right there as soon as those eggs are done. And it looks like I just about need to go ahead and pop the yolks and get them flipped. I can see that two more of these pieces of bacon are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off this cookie sheet, get this back in there. And I think there's a couple pieces on this one that are done as well. My oven definitely has hot spots, so it's good just to keep an eye on it. These eggs are done. I think I'm gonna try, since I have a canning ring out right here, maybe I'll try that canning ring trick. Maybe not, because <laughs> then I would have to get six out to cook more eggs. And I do need a little bit more grease in my pan. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that bacon grease in there. Instead of getting out like butter or something, we might as well use this. Now we're gonna cook up our eggs. Our bacon is almost done. <laughs> My dogs are patiently waiting for me to drop something and our eggs are done but I wanna check my bacon because it was almost done last time I checked it and it is done. So let me just pull this out of the oven real quick so I don't burn it. That's the last thing I wanna do. I'm gonna get the bacon off this cookie sheet in just a minute. We're gonna keep using this oven, so I wanna keep it hot. So I'm gonna close this, let me wipe this out. So I'm gonna get this back on the stove and I'm gonna also put a little bit more of our bacon drippings in here. If you don't wanna do this, you could absolutely use butter, but this is gonna add great flavor. And the last thing I would wanna do is waste that. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. I'm gonna get the stove back on and I'm gonna make it a little bit hotter this time because we're going to fry up our onions and peppers that we chopped earlier. We're gonna get a good amount of pepper on there and a good amount of salt. That's probably good. So while these cook up, I can get the bacon off this cookie sheet. And the bacon is showing up way darker for you than it is for me. So this is perfectly cooked for the way Josh and I like it. So I'm gonna get this off of this cookie sheet and I need to get one more paper towel. I'm 
I just want to dab off any excess grease and the way that we'll do that is just let the bacon sit on this paper towel. And then we're gonna reuse this cookie sheet to cook our potatoes. So what I'm gonna do is take our potatoes, put them on this cookie sheet with the remaining bacon drippings because that has a lot of yummy flavor. And I'm gonna season this with pepper. Just a little bit of salt because that bacon has some salt in it. And then I'm going to mix this up in with the bacon dripping so that can coat the potatoes. Now I'm gonna get these potatoes cooking in this same oven until golden brown. We are almost completely done with all the prep and then we can start assembling our meals. But I do have some bacon grease here and I don't want to waste that because it is deliciously flavorful stuff and I like to cook potatoes and vegetables and all sorts of things with it. And this is pasture raised pork from a hog that I bought from a local farmer. So I wanna to try to use everything as possible. So I just keep a jar in my fridge of bacon grease and I can pull it out and cook with it whenever I want. And then I'm gonna set this aside. I'm just using this little strainer here to get out any of the bacon bits actually because I don't really want that going into my jar. I'll let this kind of cool down just a little bit and then I'll pop that into my fridge and I'll use that later. So really the only thing that we need to do for prep wise, because our peppers and onions are done, I did turn the stove off, we're waiting for our potatoes to finish cooking. I have stirred them a couple times, is to actually prep some of this bacon. This bacon is gonna be used for three of our recipes and we need 12 pieces cut in half. So two, four, six, 12. So I'm gonna cut these in half. And these are going to be for our breakfast sandwiches. Each sandwich is gonna get two pieces. So basically one full piece of bacon. I'm gonna set these aside. And the rest of this bacon is gonna be used for our breakfast casserole and for our breakfast burrito. So I actually need to chop this up into bacon bits. And you can chop this as fine or as chunky as you want. Another thing I'd love to do is cook extra bacon and chop it up like this or leave it whole and pop it in the freezer cooked so that anytime you want bacon bits for a salad or for just quick, easy bacon, if you want bacon on like a hamburger or something, you just have pre-cooked bacon in the freezer and you can buy pre-cooked bacon that you know stays in your freezer or you can just cook up a couple extra pounds, have it in your freezer ready to go. So say you want a bacon cheeseburger, you don't need to go through the effort of frying up bacon. Okay, so half of this, I need to divide this in half, this chopped bits, because half of it's gonna be for one recipe and the other half is going to be for the other. I can smell these potatoes and they smell incredible. The whole house actually smells incredible because the bacon and sausage and onions and peppers. We have our potatoes nicely browned. So I'm gonna pull these out so now we officially have all of our components done. I can turn the oven off. Now we're gonna start assembling. So the guide on how to cook everything is on page four. So now I can go ahead and flip to page five. Page five has a little box that says, you should now have X, Y, Z. And then you can check off each box to make sure you didn't forget anything. We have our peppers and onions. We have our fried potatoes. We have bacon too different piles of bacon for two different dishes that's chopped. We have our sliced bacon, we have our fried eggs, we have our scrambled eggs, and we have our sausage. In the refrigerator, I have the cheese that I grated yesterday, and then over there we have our tortillas, our English muffins, our croissants, and our packaging that we are going to put our casserole in. So I'm just checking everything off the list to make sure that I have done that. 
Now the next part of this is part three, where we're gonna start assembling all these dishes. So here I need to count out 12 croissants, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get these cut directly in half. I love these Costco croissants because they're nice and big, and you can get a really nice big sandwich out of them. If you are new to my kitchen, I wanna welcome you and say thank you for coming. And if you have been here before, I wanna thank you again for coming and being in my kitchen with me. I would love it if you would subscribe because the next thing we are gonna be doing actually tomorrow is today was breakfast meal prep. So if you like meal prep videos, the next thing we're gonna be doing is prepping all the dinners that I'm gonna be preparing for my sister and some desserts and a couple special things that my two nieces requested. So that's gonna to be tomorrow. Today is focusing on breakfast and tomorrow is going to be focusing on dinner. So we have two, four, six, eight, seven. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Oh, perfect, there's exactly 12 in this package. I did not even realize that. Okay, so it looks like I can assemble one, two, three, four, five, six at a time. So now I'm gonna take my eggs and my breakfast sausage, and each one of these is going to get a breakfast sausage. You can see how I could have maybe shaped them just a little bit better so they fit a little bit better, but that'll work just fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and put an egg on each one of these. Some of the eggs, if they were a little bit big, you just kind of fold them in half. We're gonna get a piece of cheese on here. And I think what I'm gonna do, because these croissants are a little oblong, I think I'm gonna fold them in half and kind of put them like that, just so that they fit a little bit better on the croissant. I think I'm gonna put the cheese on the bottom. This part, it really does not matter at all how you wanna assemble cheese on the top, egg on the top, tomato, tomato. I'm gonna repeat this process six more times and there are our croissant sandwiches. I almost forgot my favorite part of this recipe and this part is totally optional, but I'm opting in because I think it is what makes this absolutely scrumptious and over the top. And that is a honey mustard glaze. So I'm gonna put equal parts mustard and just honey into a bowl. I'm gonna mix this together and then we're gonna top each one of our croissants with a little bit of this honey mustard glaze. We're not gonna top it, we're going to put it on the inside. So I'm just gonna mix this together. I love honey and I love mustard. And those two paired together are absolutely a match made in heaven. So here's our sauce. If you don't like honey or mustard or you don't want any sweetness to your breakfast croissants, go ahead and leave this part out. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip each one of these over and brush the top. Now we are officially done with the first recipe. So now we're going to move on to our English muffins. I do need to preheat my oven on the broil setting because we are going to toast the English muffins before we assemble the sandwiches. You can use whatever kind of English muffins you want. I went ahead with some sourdough English muffins, but if you have a particular brand that's your favorite, definitely use those. This part is optional as well. You do not have to toast your English muffins if you don't want to, but I like them toasted, so I'm gonna go through the effort to go ahead and get them toasted. But I do wanna try to get them all in this oven at the same time. I've got some butter here that's melted. These also are really good with the honey mustard glaze on them as well. But today I'm just gonna do the mustard, not mustard, the butter. Get these crumbs in the sink. 
This is optional. You do not have to toast the English muffins, but I like the little bit of extra toasty flavor it gives, and the butter just adds a nice butteriness to these sandwiches. So I'm gonna take the step to go ahead and melt just a little bit of butter and use my pastry brush and get a little bit of butter on each one of these English muffins and put it in the oven under broil. Keep a close eye on that though. <laughs> Ask me how I know. That will burn very, very quickly if you don't keep your eye on it. So while that's broiling, I'm gonna go ahead and take my cheese and I'm gonna cut the cheese in half just so that it fits on the sandwich a little bit better. I have found that if I cut it in half and then I can overlap the cheese just a little bit, then there's less of the cheese sitting off the sandwich. So when I go to reheat the sandwich, there's less that is just melting off the sandwich and kind of making it messier to eat. So that's why I do take the effort to go ahead and cut them in half and then kind of stack them just a little bit on top of each other so they fit just a bit better. Now that I have the cheese on there, I'm gonna take an egg and top each one of these with an egg. And then the last thing will be to top it with our bacon that we cut in half and we had prepped ready to go on top of this. And one reason why I like to prep multiple things on one day if I can is because I like having options. This always reduces the mental load when I have not menu planned and I know that there's different options prepped and ready to go in my freezer, whether that's breakfast or dinner. I love having meals prepped and ready for me so that on days that I did not meal plan, I know that I have multiple different options in my freezer ready to go and I can just pull a couple different items out and we have options and I don't have to think about what to cook because I already have a bunch of things prepped and ready for us. So once I have those topped with the bacon, I'm going to put the top on and then we'll wrap all of the sandwiches at one time right before we package them up and ready to go in the freezer. Two of the four things are completely assembled now, so now we're gonna move on to our breakfast burritos. Josh just walked in here, and he's really excited about all this prep, and I haven't even made his favorite yet, which are breakfast burritos. These are our favorite, favorite, favorite breakfast item to have meal prepped. So half of these sauteed onions and peppers are going to go into our Amish casserole. So I need to get a bowl out actually to mix our Amish casserole in. This Amish casserole is my mom's recipe and we love it as a family. It is our go-to breakfast casserole, especially when we have like bridal showers or baby showers or brunches or things like that. This is kind of our go-to one. And it originally didn't have onions and peppers. It had onions in it, but I don't think it had peppers but I added the peppers because I really like peppers and onions. So we're gonna go ahead and mix up our breakfast burrito mixings right in here. We might as well, because we have already dirtied it. We're gonna add our potatoes that we grilled up. Get this in with our peppers and onions. To our breakfast burrito mixture, we're gonna add half of our bacon. The rest of this bacon is gonna go into our peppers and onions mixture because this is gonna be for the Amish casserole. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put our scrambled eggs into here. I'm gonna break up those eggs just a little bit because the kind of the curds that I had made were a little bit big, but you could leave them large or make them small, however your family prefers. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mix all of this together. And this is our breakfast burrito filling mixture. For our filling mixture, we only have one more ingredient and that's a really important ingredient. And I have on accident forgotten it in the past and we do miss it when it's not in there. And that's some cheese. I went ahead and I pre-shredded this cheese yesterday. I just cleaned my counter because I'm gonna go ahead and make these breakfast burritos right here on the counter. And I have half of my tortillas here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wrap them as I roll them because I have found that makes it a lot easier, is I'm gonna divide my filling mixture in half. And then I'm gonna divide that into sixth so that I can try to evenly fill my tortillas. It's easier to kind of eyeball six instead of 12. Sometimes when I make this, I end up with a little bit more filling and then I just enjoy eating the filling. It does help 
if you put the filling kind of toward one third of the tortilla, toward the bottom. Just like that. I have a half cup measure, so I'm putting a good solid half cup in each tortilla. And because I've divided this in half, I can actually put just a little bit more in each one. Now I'm gonna to top each tortilla with some shredded cheese. So I like to fold it in half and then fold up, tuck the end in, fold these corners in and then roll. And then I put that in some plastic wrap and I'm gonna wrap that up, fold that over and there is a breakfast burrito that we will enjoy greatly. have a little bit more in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and evenly distribute it amongst these. You know what, this looks like it's enough for one more. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just grab one more tortilla and we're gonna end up with 13 breakfast burritos and that will be just fine. Let me show you up close how to do this. What I like to do is fold the tortilla ends in and I have the filling kind of toward the back half. And then I fold it up and I take that tail and I kind of tuck that in. And then I tuck these corners in and I make sure that it's pointier toward the end so that when I roll, the tortilla kind of falls on itself. And you don't want to overstuff because you really don't want these to break on you, but you want to make sure they're nice and hearty. So again, there is 12 breakfast burritos. The very last thing to assemble, which is going to be incredibly easy because we've already made the components, is the Amish casserole. So in here, we've got the onions and peppers, our pre-cooked bacon. Now I'm adding some salt and pepper six eggs and I've officially run out of all my fresh eggs so we use the help of the grocery store on these ones and they're definitely a little on the small side I probably could put seven to make up just for the small size but I think I'll just go ahead and go with six and with this recipe you have freedom to choose how you want to serve this or how you want to dish this up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in two different smaller freezer containers so we have two different meals. If you have a little bit of a larger family, you could go ahead and serve this in a nine by 13 and just have one big dish. So that was some cottage cheese. And now I'm gonna add a handful of Swiss cheese that I pre-shredded yesterday and a good handful of cheddar cheese that I also shredded yesterday. The very last thing we're gonna add to this are some frozen hash browns. Now these are cubed hash browns. You can use cubed or shredded, whatever your family prefers. We kind of go through phases around here. Sometimes we like the shredded and sometimes we like the cubed. Today I use the cubed and everything, but shredded works just as good. Now 
These all are going to my sister, and so I am going to use disposable pans for this. If I was keeping this at my house, I would go ahead and use glass, but I don't want her to have to think about getting me my dishes back. And I do have three. I bought these nine by nines at the store and they came in a three pack, but you can see they're pretty shallow as opposed to a glass one has much more depth to it. So we might use all three for this. We might just use two. If we end up filling three, then I'll keep one for Josh and I, and then I'll give my sister two. Yep, I think these, because these baking dishes are a little bit on the shallow side, we can go ahead and get three. Look at that. But if you weren't using the disposable, I, I would only do two. But you could also get all of this into one nine by 13. And we are going to get our labels put on this. This is gonna be the first thing we're going to get our labels on. So I just printed off my labels. These are not only labels, these also have the reheat instructions on them and they have a spot for me to put the date on here so that if in my family, if anyone else is going into the freezer or refrigerator to grab these, they know not only when they were made, they know what they are and they know how to reheat them. I just wrote 2026, it is not 2026. And I printed three off because I ended up getting three of these and I wanna have one label in each one of the bags. I just selected page 11, it's on page 11, and I asked my printer to print it three times. Okay, make sure I got all of them written on, which I do. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut all three of these pages at the same time. So we are now in arts and crafts. And I guess I wouldn't need to really cut the edge part off, but I'm doing that. So we have our English muffins, breakfast casserole, sausage croissant sandwiches, and our breakfast burritos. All four right here. Now it's time to go ahead and prep everything to go into the freezer. And I like to have two layers of protection. So my first layer of protection on these breakfast burritos is one layer of plastic wrap. And then I'm gonna put this in a silicone reusable bag. Now, if you prefer not to use plastic wrap, you could use freezer paper for the first layer of protection or parchment paper, and then put them in some sort of freezer bag, whether that's a silicone reusable one or a Ziploc plastic one. Now I am going to put a reheat and what it is label in each one of these bags and get this closed up and these are going to be for Josh and I. The ones that I'm gifting to my sister I am going to put in just a disposable bag so that she does not have to worry about trying to get me one of my silicone bags back. This is just for her for convenience and I'm also with these going to put one of the labels what it is and how to reheat it so that if one of her daughters or my brother-in-law decide they want to grab something out of the freezer they one know what it is and two they know how to reheat it now i need to go ahead and prep both sandwiches the same way i did the breakfast burritos and i'm just going to wrap them in one layer of plastic wrap and then get them in a bag I have found that I like the reusable silicone bags really well for applications like this because once we're done using the bag from either the sandwiches or the burritos, the bag is not dirty and so it's really easy to clean and then reuse it again. So same here, I'm going to put the ones that are going to my sister in a Ziploc bag, disposable one, and then the ones for us are gonna go into the silicone bag. So typically what I will do at the beginning of the week is I will grab maybe one or two 
sandwiches of each variety, pull those out, have those in my fridge, and then each morning Josh and I can decide which sandwich we want and we can heat that up and enjoy it that way. That's one reason why it's nice to have different options so that we can kind of choose what we want. And then obviously some mornings we're not going to want breakfast sandwiches. So if we want like granola and yogurt, or if that week I prepped a baked oatmeal or I made steel cut oats in the instant pot, maybe we won't have any of these sandwiches, but it is so nice and so convenient to have these prepped for a high protein breakfast on days that I did not prep a breakfast, or we just want something like this and we don't wanna go through the effort of making each component the morning of. I just finished packaging everything up and I'm pretty tired for the afternoon and I don't wanna do any cooking for dinner tonight. So what I've decided is I'm gonna go ahead and just pop one of these Amish breakfast casseroles in the oven. And this is what we're gonna have for dinner. I've got some fruit that we can have with that. I just preheated the oven. And that is what we're going to have as a late lunch slash dinner tonight because I'm not doing any more cooking today. I do have some dishes I still need to do by hand, but I was able to get the dishwasher loaded and running. I just turned it on. We have two breakfast casseroles plus a bonus one that is in the oven that we are going to be enjoying shortly. And then we got 12 breakfast burritos. No, we got 13 breakfast burritos, 12 breakfast English muffin sandwiches, and 12 croissant sandwiches. So I'm gonna gift my sister the ones in the Ziploc bags. These ones are the ones we're gonna keep. And I'm just gonna pop those all right into the freezer. I did put a couple breakfast burritos directly into the refrigerator because those are Josh's absolute favorites. So I know that he is gonna to wanna to eat those for breakfast tomorrow. And now that I have a air fryer, they turn out so delicious in the air fryer. And if you don't have an air fryer, because I just got one a couple weeks ago, they still taste absolutely fantastic in the microwave to reheat. If you don't like microwaves or you don't have a microwave, you can also reheat them on the stovetop or in the oven. They just take a little bit longer. I have never had this many and this big of a variety of savory breakfasts in my freezer, so this is gonna be fantastic. My family loves baked oatmeal as well. So we aren't gonna just go through all of these right away. One of these is more than enough to fill Josh and I up for a good long time. There's so much protein in these that they're very, very filling. And so this will last us a long time, but I probably, you know, will meal prep other items as well. And if you're new, like I said earlier, or if you enjoy watching bulk prep videos, that is what I'm gonna be doing next tomorrow. I forgot, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of sweet prep so that my sister, because my niece has asked for a variety of things and they requested chocolate chip muffins. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them chocolate chip muffins. When my niece asks me to make them something, I oblige and I am happy to do it. So chocolate chip muffins are on the list of things to make tomorrow. And I'm so thrilled because it is pouring today. It is supposed to pour tomorrow and then the sun is supposed to come out for the foreseeable future. And the last thing I wanna be doing with any extra spare time is having to worry about meal prep. And so this is gonna buy me a lot of time in the future where I can be focusing on enjoying the great outdoors, which is where my heart is right now. At the beginning of spring, we've got some big projects that Josh and I need to tackle this coming weekend. And the sun looks like it's just coming out now, so maybe I'm gonna go head out there now and spend a little bit of time trying to figure out where exactly we're gonna be planting things because I need to get things in the ground starting this coming weekend. And I need help with from Josh this weekend building some new trellises. So I am blabbering <laughs> because I am tired. I'm gonna go get this in the freezer. Please join me tomorrow if you want to see how we are gonna be prepping savory dinners and a couple sweet breakfasts and a couple desserts. If you enjoyed this, I can also pop a couple of videos here. You can go enjoy between now and the next upload. I just wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. Do not forget, if you want the guide, the step-by-step -step guide on how to do this with the grocery list, the printable labels on how to reheat and when you made them, that will be the first link down in the description box below. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.